You know those numbers printed on bike components that I always ignore and pretend don't matter? Well, those printed values, I think as we all know, are torque values. So just for fun, torque is the result of a force applied at a certain radius on an axis of rotation. You know, like in our case, a tool on a bolt. So you've got two values that are responsible for the resulting torque on whatever it is you're working on. One, significantly easier to measure in real world circumstances, the length. Say for example, say for example, I've got a, a frustrating bottom bracket. I've got this, uh, this long breaker bar with my bottom bracket tool on it to break it open. I know I've got 58 and a half centimeters or 23 inches of leverage or radius or length that will go into the torque that's being created at my bolt or, you know, bottom bracket cut. What I don't know is how much I'm actually pushing down on it. All I can confidently say is this one that's longer because it's a bigger number of long than this creates more torque, which makes it a lot easier to remove stuck things. It makes it a lot easier to tighten things down, probably way more than they should. Now, while growing up and working on things and learning all the tricks of the trade, especially primarily working on these things that are fairly over-engineered and quite beefy, my general rule of thumb was tighten it until it starts to like hurt your hands, then you're good. Now, because of the types of bikes I was working on, that method growing up really didn't show any sort of consequences at all. And because there was no consequences, of course, that same mentality of growing up and working on these beastly little BMX bikes that are built to take abuse, the same kind of ideas came into the world of like slightly more fragile road bikes. Admittedly, I did not take on tightening bolts on road bikes with the same hurt your hand mentality that I did with my BMXs or, or even motorbikes for that matter. But I did have it in my head that if snug and everything kind of being tight is good, a little more is probably better. Until the day that I heard on the faceplate of the first nice stem and handlebars that I ever spent my money on. I broke this faceplate by over tightening this a little bit. Not motorcycle tight, but enough to be like, oh, okay, maximum 5.5 Newton meters. Maybe there isn't a safety factor of like 7,000 on these. You're gonna take more care. Okay, so lesson learned. I don't have the ability to tell how much force I'm putting into a tool at a set length, and I am no hero. When I was working in a bike shop, I used a torque wrench on every bolt I touched. I wasn't breaking anything else due to my carelessness again. Though, since having left bike shops, um, well, I've kind of been torque wrenchless. And I find myself slowly getting back into that it's snug, just just do it a little more. Just, and that's where I'm going with this. This is the part where I say this video is sponsored. Because, because these guys, you know these guys, fantastic channel sponsor and builder of super high quality CNC machined tools have sent this along. Unique, jumping in with Spindat channel again with some product and notably financial support. No more uncertainty on the resulting torque from the forces that I don't know what I'm putting in on lengths that I do know when tightening bolts on somewhat fragile parts. Torque wrench equipped shops, slightly more pro than non torque wrench equipped shops. Now, in our favorite way to showcase products on this channel, we've got a list of criteria. It's called the does it suck list of criteria. And those five criteria are price, weight, machine quality, 
ease of installation, and problem solving. As in its ability to solve a problem. So when it comes to pricing for calibrated measurement tools, I think it's expected that things are gonna be a little pricier than just your average, you know, regular tool. It's still surprising that this, with this case, this tool, all of these bits come in at 70 bucks US on Amazon and like 92 Canadian on Amazon. Now there's certainly lots of things in the world that you can spend your 70 or 90 Canadian dollars on. It could be this torque wrench that'll stay in your tool arsenal for many, many years to come, or for a little bit more, you could, uh, you could buy this Nerf Rizal Hypnos X1X 1200 Red. The novelty and the excitement of, of wanting to like play with it and, and use it for no apparent reason will probably be the same when they both arrive, um, but the usability, certainly one of them drops significantly more than the other. Price, uh, price doesn't suck. For weight, it's got some girth. Definitely has some weight behind it, which honestly, honestly I kind of want in a torque wrench. If this didn't have the weight behind it that it does, I would actually be concerned. You know, it probably weighs slightly less than a red brick. It doesn't suck. Actually, I need machine quality. I, I hate to just be a broken record, but I continue to be absolutely amazed at the amount of effort that, that the team over at Unique actually puts in to the machine, machine quality of the tools that they put out, especially for the prices. The aluminum and the anodizing that they actually put into everything is always top notch. All of the numbering and the lining, it's all very, very clear and easy to see. But I think most importantly and most impressively is that they don't just send you a torque wrench, they literally send you a certificate of calibration, the dates, everything is on there. I feel like when you buy stuff from companies that don't have like the, the brand recognition that say some of the bigger companies have, you expect to, to not get stuff like this. You don't expect to get this kind of machine quality, this kind of anodizing quality, the fact that you get a certificate of calibration, you just kind of think like, well, it's a lower cost therefore lower quality of work, but that's just kind of not the case here. However, I like the way the handle looks. I think it's badass. I like that it's like diamond shaped and stuff. Um, I am a little bit sad that it isn't aluminum as well. I thought it was aluminum. It isn't, it's plastic. Uh, and the collar here that has your uh, micrometer sizing for your torque. Um, that's also plastic. Not the end of the world, but uh, definitely was fooled a little bit to think that this was aluminum. It is not, it's plastic. Everything else is, is you know, very torque wrenchy. Machine quality, as expected, does not suck. Slight disappointment that the handle is not machined aluminum as well, but honestly, for the price, you know, what was, like seriously, what was I expecting? And it still looks cool, so. Ease of installation. Well, for installing your tool bits, um, there's a push back, allows that to go on pretty easy. Very easy to install, but more importantly, setting torque is as easy as pulling back on the collar here and turning this. It also has notches wherever you get to so that it won't accidentally spin out of where you need to be. I'm trying not to rough house this too much because it's a precision tool and you don't wanna ruin them. So this stem calls for six Newton meters. So I'm gonna set this to six. Proper, proper four mil that's included with it's already on there. So while tightening and you reach the torque, you'll get a... That's how you'll know you're not over tightening. So I think one thing worth noting, when I was working at the shop, the torque wrenches I used were less like this and were more the preset ones. You can buy them from Specialized, you can buy them from Park Tools. Quicker and easier to use because it was a preset torque. You just grab it off of the shop tool wall. It's got either a four or a five mil on it and it'll be preset. So I was a little quicker to use those as a torque wrench than I ever was to use this style that was in the shop as well. Basically, when you find yourself in situations of, of torques that don't fall into those smaller ranges that the preset ones have, then you gotta pull something like this out. So a proper cased, calibrated torque wrench is certainly less 
easy to use, has less easy installation than the preset ones, but offers a better range than what those do. There's a give and take. In a perfect world, you have them all. Um, in this real world, you, you go for this. So you go for this instead of the preset ones first. So, um, usability, ease of installation, I guess if you wanna put that all in the same category. I keep putting this away. Um, it does suck a little bit. It sucks to have to pull this out of its case, not rough house it, be pretty easy on it, and then set the torque each time. That sucks. The next category kind of makes up for it. Essentially the first four or five minutes of this video was the explanation of how this thing is a problem solver. So we can already agree that it doesn't suck in the problem solving department. Having a tool that'll help you avoid doing this to your expensive bike parts, well that's advantageous. It's the type of thing that you wanna have in your tool arsenal. And I'll give you an example of something that I did that I, I knew I shouldn't do, but I didn't have a torque wrench and I didn't have a way of knowing how much force, how much torque I was putting on my bolts. So I did it to the full capacity of my abilities anyway. And it is when I was putting together the linkage after replacing the bearings on my felt compulsion. It's like it's built in my DNA. If there's still some clunking, just go to every single bolt and tighten it as hard as possible to see if that clunking will go away, which is just an absolutely idiotic, stupid. Other than the fact that I'm an idiot, it's because I didn't have, I didn't have anything that could tell me just how much of an idiot I am. Ignorance is bliss until you break something. The intelligent thing to do when you've got a problem isn't to just tighten it down harder, it's to actually look into it and see what the problem is. To solve that problem, I'll be taking it apart, trying to replace the last few bushings I haven't done yet, and then putting it back together properly at the proper torques with this torque wrench. You can solve dumb decisions like that with empirical torque ratings that come through a torque wrench in your shop. Not to mention, it's a good looking piece of kit. It's always the cherry on top. So, excitingly, thank you, Unique, for supporting another video. Thank you for supporting the shop with another quality tool. Thanks for checking it out. And if you want one, they're, uh, they're linked below. Obviously there'll be some kickback if you do decide to get one. I appreciate everything. Hopefully we can fix that thing and not break things due to over torquing ever again, which I haven't done in a long time, but it was coming. <laughs>